Hello, I'm Tim Rhodes, pastor of Bethel Baptist Church, and welcome to our morning worship service. Bethel Baptist Church is located on Kentucky Highway 36 in Frenchburg, Kentucky. You can find our website at www.bethelbaptistfrenchburg.com and you can reach us at 606-768-3768 or 606-776-7360. If you'd like to write us, you'd like to know more about our church, you have questions, you'd even like to help and support, you can reach us at Post Office Box 141, Frenchburg, Kentucky, 40322. I trust you'll enjoy our service and perhaps be part of our ministry. But God bless you as we join our morning worship service. All right, well, God bless all of you. You ready to worship the Lord Jesus? We always worship Him, I hope, in everything we do. He, we worship Him. But it's good to worship together with one another, right? Would you stand as we worship Him? Father, we thank you so much for all your goodness and your love toward us and your faithfulness, all the blessings you pour out on us every day, and I pray we would never take those for granted. Father, we thank you above all things for the Lord Jesus. We thank you for our salvation through him. We're thankful, Father, for all that we have through Christ. And Lord, today in his name, we ask your blessings upon our service. Now, Lord, we ask that you would anoint the singing and the preaching and the prayers and our fellowship together. I pray, Lord, that you would work among us today and that you would challenge us and convict us and encourage us, Lord, that we would please you and do what you would have us to do. And Lord, you know the needs of the people here today. Whatever is going on in their lives, Lord, you know. There may be someone who's unsaved, and we pray today that they would be saved today, that they wouldn't put it off, but be saved today. And Lord, all the other needs that they may have, that we all have, Lord, we pray that you'd meet those in a way that pleases you, that brings you glory, that strengthens our faith. And Lord, we pray for those two that are on our prayer list that are on our hearts, names we've called throughout this morning in our classes. And Lord, we just pray that you'd meet every need of those. There are those who are sick, and those who are having treatments, and those who are facing uh, tests and surgeries. And Lord, we just pray for your healing upon them. And there are people who need 
uh, not only physical help, but emotional help, spiritual help. And Lord, we pray that you would intervene and strengthen them and help them. And Lord, help us to know that we need to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ and know and believe with all of our hearts that he is going to carry our burdens. He is going to meet all of our needs. And Father, we just pray that we as a church would please you in our work, uh, that each one of us in the church that would do the work of the ministry, would build up the church, would impact our community, would make a difference with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I pray that Jesus is lifted up in everything we do. And we pray in his name. Amen. 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 Thank you. May be seated. If you would turn to 268. As we all join in singing, there's power in the blood. 268. As we sing. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the
everybody out today. We've got a good crowd. It's always good to be, as I always say, it's good to, it's always good to worship the Lord, as the pastor was saying, but it's great when you've got a, a room full of people, right? We're all worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, uh, all right, our choir's going to sing for you this time. I'm trying to think of the first one. Jesus, hold my hand. That's the way to go, right? Brother Otis, good to see you here this morning. I know you've been out a while, but uh, yeah, it's great to see you. Here. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand, please. All right.
dreamed of a city called glory, so bright and so fair. When I entered the gates, I cried, holy, the angels all Until I 
great home above. above. Oh, what wonderful love, wonderful, marvelous love, of God's wonderful love. I can't explain, I can't explain all the joy, all the joy that he joy placed, that he placed in my place. In my heart, it's giving me, it's giving me perfect, perfect peace in my sweet soul. peace for my soul. I'll never stray, I'll never stray from his love, from his love. His love is wonderful, that's for sure, amen? Unconditional, everlasting, wonderful. Please turn with me to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13. One verse, Exodus chapter 20. Verse 13 simply says, Thou shalt not kill. Father, we thank you for your word and its truth and its power. And Father, as we study together today, I pray that every word spoken is yours and not mine. I pray your will is done among us in the life of every person and in our church. Thank you so much for your love. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. The sixth commandment is simply, thou shalt not kill. Now this means a better translation of this is, thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not commit Murder. This was not intended to be an edict against defending your family or self-defense or defending your nation or for policemen or people who are uh, called to defend and to protect. This commandment is thou shalt not commit premeditated, planned murder. And God takes this very seriously. And in the last days, it says about those things in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3 gives us a whole group of verses there about the last days, it says that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And among those things is this phrase, this line that says, without natural affection. Abortion is not natural affection. It's unnatural to murder Babies. And I know this is, uh, this is a difficult uh, subject for some. It shouldn't be uh, because God is very clear on the sanctity of life. Uh, but to think, to think that in our nation, in, in the United States, a nation founded upon godly principles founded upon faith in Christ, that we could have aborted, murdered 59 million babies. Now, let me say this before we talk about life. There may be someone here today who has 
had an abortion. And I want you to know God loves you. I want you to know he will forgive you. Uh, He will comfort you. He will restore you. And I want you to know we're not condemning you. But we are preaching the truth. And and we are calling out to uh, one another, to the church, to our nation, that this is a sin and it's a national sin, the abortion, the murder of unborn babies. As a matter of fact, in our nation today, there are some who would give you the choice at birth of whether you want to keep your baby or not. Now, in this issue, uh, before we start, let me also, on behalf of Christianity, own up to our own, uh, to our own failures. When the debate began to rage, you know that had Americans stood up, this would not have happened. I mean, had Christians stood up, this would not have happened. And while the debate was going on and on and on, there are many Christians who also said, well, the baby would be better off. Honestly, the baby would be better off. Well, the baby would be better off. It's a terrible situation, and parents, and this, and this. It, but they'd be better off. And even Christians got caught up into that argument, which is not true. Two wrongs don't make a right. Sin is sin is sin. And then we stood and said, you've got to have the baby, you've got to have the baby, you've got to have the baby. You can't kill the baby, you've got to have the baby. And the unwed mothers and mothers in, in crisis situations would say, well, what am I going to do with the baby? And the church would say, well, I don't know, but you've got to have the baby. And the church did nothing to provide. You know, it's easy to say you've got to have the baby. It's another thing altogether to say, And we'll come alongside you. And we'll help you. We'll build homes. We'll provide uh, services. We didn't do that for a long, long time. I can remember the first time I heard of a a place for unwed mothers, for babies, was Jerry Falwell and his um, uh, Liberty Godparent home, or I, I can't remember the name of it, but But anyway, he's the first I heard of that. Slowly the church began to come along and do things to help. Um, But by then, the world had had not only their foot in the door, they had shut the door. It's hard to undo what has been done. I'm thankful for those who continue to work. We continue to stand for life. Uh, We continue to cry out for life, and I'm thankful for all of those who who support life and do what they can do, and and, uh, we don't give up on the fact that maybe one day Roe v. Wade would be overturned. Uh, But it is an indictment against our nation and against the church of this terrible sin across our nation has claimed 59 million lives of the unborn. And so this morning, I want us to talk about life, even in the midst of death. I want us to talk about life. First of all, the start of life. When does it begin? And I want you to turn with me to Psalm 139, this incredible passage in Psalm 139. In verse 13 it says, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth 
right well. My substance was not hidden from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, listen, yet being unperfect or unformed. And in thy book all were written, all my members or all of me was written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Even the unformed baby. God knows. And God has thoughts. And we know then, both biblically, medically, scientifically, life begins at conception. There's absolutely no question life begins at conception. Life, a person, begins at conception. A person, a human being, begins at conception. Now, one of the ways that we have been deceived over the years, that people have been deceived, is the vernacular that people uses to describe a life. They say it's an embryo. They don't say it's a person. It's just simply an embryo, which indicates that it's really not a person. An embryo, they refer to a life, a person that is between conception and eight weeks old. And then you've heard fetus all the time. You hear people talk about a fetus, eight weeks to birth. It's just a fetus. Listen, it is an unborn offspring. What is an unborn offspring? It's a baby. It's a human being. It's a life. But many people, even Christians, even well-intentioned people have been deceived by how people present it and what they say as if a fetus is less than human, as if an embryo is not really alive. Life begins at conception. The source of life is Jesus. The source of life is Jesus. Do you realize that all life comes from Him? In uh, John 1, it, it makes this simple statement about Jesus. It says, now listen to this, all things in verse 3 were made by him, and without without him was not anything made that was made, and then it says this, in him was life. In him is life. The Lord Jesus is the source of life. Life itself comes from Jesus. He even said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Jesus is life. And not only that, Jesus is the fullness of life. He he warned us, he said, now the devil and the false prophets, they come, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, which means this, that you might have it to the full. In other words, Jesus is a source of life 
And he's the source of the fullness of life. The fullness of life. There's people looking for what life is really all about. It's amazing in that sometime, I, I didn't read, I didn't see it, and so I don't know the quote exactly, uh, but as I understand it, someone at the, was it the Golden Globes or something the other night, the awards for movies, as an actress who was so thankful to live in a nation of choice. So that you could, so that you could be what you want to be and do what you want to do. In other words, I guess what she was saying is, it's good to live in a place where if a baby gets in your way, if a baby hinders your career, if a baby keeps you from doing what you want to do, just choose to get rid of the baby. It's an interesting thing, this choice, uh, that it is your body. It's, it's not yours. There's nothing about you that's yours. God made you. God gave you the opportunities. And you, as, and I'm sorry in front of all the youngsters who may be in here, but you had your choices. You had the choice of whether or not you're going to participate sexually and you had a choice of protection. But you don't have a choice when the baby comes along. And when you get rid of a baby, that's sin. That's just sin. Now again, if this hits home to someone, I want you to understand God loves you. God will forgive you, comfort you, restore you. But abortion, murder of the unborn... Is sin. Amen. Jesus, if you want the fullness of life, it's not about getting rid of inconveniences. It's about accepting Jesus Christ and experience the fullness of comfort, of, of peace, of joy, of salvation, of all that He has for you. He has life to the full if you'll give your life to Him. He is the source of life. He is the source of the fullness of life, meaningful life, everything life is supposed to be. Jesus is the source of that. And then he is the source of eternal life. You know, as we celebrated the birth of Jesus and we looked, in, uh, we looked at Isaiah 9, 6, and the titles, the descriptions of Jesus, and it called him Everlasting Father. Well, that means he is the source, Jesus, is the source of eternal life. You can't have eternal life apart from Jesus Christ. You cannot. He is the source of life. He's the source of the fullness of life. He is the source of eternal life. In John 10, 28, talking about his sheep, his followers, those that are saved, he says, I give unto them eternal life. Yeah. He gives unto us eternal life. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. And you're not going to find it on some spiritual journey somewhere. Uh, life, abundant life, eternal life, all come through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. By faith, by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the source of life. And then, the sanctity of life. You hear us talk about the sanctity of life. What in the world does sanctity mean? It means something of ultimate importance. Ultimate importance. Life is sacred. Life is holy. It is of the ultimate, highest importance of life. And God put a premium on that. And that is why, he's, and that's why he said, Thou shalt not commit murder because of the sanctity of life. Now, here's why life 
is of the ultimate importance. This is why their sanctity of life. First of all, you were created by God. You were created by God. Now the Bible says in verse 27 of Genesis 1, so God created man. In verse 7 it says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So here's your choices. There's only two beliefs, and that's with God and without God. You can believe in God and believe what I think is the most important verse in all of Scripture, and that's the first verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If you will believe that verse, you can find the answers, the logical, rational, spiritual, however you want to measure it, the answers to life as where you came from, why you're here, and where you're going. You can find significance in life. You can find meaning in life. You can find purpose in life if you by faith believe in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. You say, well, we haven't seen God. But the, but the Bible tells us God presents Himself, declares Himself in our conscience. Read Romans 1. In our conscience and in creation, we see God. And Jesus declared Him when He was here. There is a God, one God, who created everything. And by faith, not blind faith, by the evidence. Follow the evidence and you will find God. And if you believe that, you can find where you came from, why you're here, and where you're going. Amen. Your other choice is this. You don't know how you got here. It's just random. There was somewhere... Now, people say, well, you, you, there... How can you believe in God? I mean, you haven't seen Him and you just, you, you just believe in God. Well, the other is even more far-fetched than that, takes more faith than that, because you've got to believe that somewhere, billions of years ago, there were these two substances. Where did they come from? Who knows where they come from? They just showed up. And then somewhere, somehow, there was a spark. Where did the spark come from? And it ignited, and it caused an explosion. And all of a sudden, over hundreds of billions of years, things just happened. I mean, that's crazy. You think it takes faith to believe in God? It takes more faith and foolishness to believe the other way. Are you kidding me? You were created by God. And not only that, you were created in the image of God. Now listen, this is important you understand this. And God said in verse 26 of Genesis 1, let us, 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 God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. God created us in His image. The word image here represent, it means representation or replica. Think about that. You are a representation. You are a replica of God. In your body, soul, and spirit. And in your rational, logical thinking. In your freedom of choice. And all these You are a replica of God. Now that image has been tarnished by sin. And yet, the Lord Jesus Christ and salvation, the Holy Spirit is redoing, recreating that image. And one day, 
we will be like him. We were made in the image of God. And the likeness means, image means representation or replica. Likeness means comparison. We compare to our creator. Now listen to this. Animals reproduce after their kind. We are made and reproduce in the image of God. Life is precious because we've been created not only by God but in His image and in His likeness and we reproduce in His image and in His likeness. And then in the evolution way of believing there is no purpose except what you assign yourself or the group assigns you. But there is no, there, there is no purpose. And that's why people there, I mean, there's no, who sets a standard? If there was, if we simply just came here by random selection, we came here by evolution, we just came here in mysterious ways, who sets the rules? A group of people? Somebody in charge? I mean, who sets the rules? You don't have to follow those things. I mean, we just came into being. There's no purpose to life. There's no meaning to life. But if you believe the correct way, you believe in God, that He created you in His image, He also created you with a purpose. As a matter of fact, in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says that there is a future and a hope for you. He created you to be conformed to the image of His Son. There is meaning in the Christian life. There's purpose. The sanctity of life is of ultimate importance because you are created by God in the image of God for the purpose of God. Amen. Every single one of you. We may, we may elevate people to certain levels and we may put them in more importance than others and we may say they've done this and this and they deserve this and this but God has created each of us in His image with His purpose for our lives. Life is precious. So today, I would call on you, God would call on you, His Word calls on you, to know the importance of life, the sanctity of life. It begins at conception. From that moment, there's a person created by God. And don't be deceived by the deceitful talk of our world. That life comes from Jesus himself who also along with life wants to provide the fullness of life and eternal life through faith in Him. And to know and to be dedicated to, committed to. We were created by God in God's image for God's purpose. That makes life important. And let me assure you today, you are important to God. You, every one of you, wherever you've been, whatever you've done, you are important to God. 
And he has a plan for your life. The number one thing he wants, his number one will for you is that you would be saved. And then to be conformed to the image of his son. If you're not saved, please come to Christ today. Accept him as Savior. We'll be here uh, to pray with you and answer your questions. But please come today and be saved. Any who are not saved, come today. Those of us who are saved, pray. Pray for our nation. Pray for your family. Maybe pray for someone who needs that special prayer and love and comfort. Maybe want to pray for someone that they would be saved. But pray. Pray. Father, we thank Well, I hope you enjoyed our program today, and I hope you were blessed by it. It is our uh, hope and our prayer that each week as you watch this program, you'll receive a blessing from God's Word. Our songs, our messages, they're about the Lord Jesus Christ. And perhaps someone accepted Christ today as Savior. If you did, we want to rejoice with you. And I just ask you, please drop a note in the mail to Bethel Baptist Church, Post Office Box 141, Frenchburg, Kentucky. And let us know. And we'll send you some material and we'll rejoice with you. Perhaps you're thinking about being saved. You never trusted Christ as Savior. And He is your greatest need. And today I just urge you, uh, to admit that you're a sinner. You know, we all are. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But if you just acknowledge you're, you're a sinner and believe that Jesus Christ truly is the one and only Savior, the only way to heaven, if you'd ask Him to forgive you of your sins, to come into your life and save you, Jesus will forgive you. He will save you. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus is the Christ, that He died and rose again, He will save you. Our prayer is that you would know Christ as Savior. And if you are saved, it's our prayer that you would serve the Lord Jesus Christ faithfully. We're to accept Him as Savior, but we're to serve Him as Lord as you heard in the message. And so, thanks for watching the program. If you have questions, let us know. Uh, pray for us as we pray for you and may God bless you. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind and it's close Good.